We ask that you would come and speak to us. Teach us of your love, of your forgiveness. Help us to understand how much you care for us, how much you long for us to be in right relationship with you. Gracious Lord, do this this morning in spite of me or through me. For this we pray. Amen. So our scripture lesson this morning comes from this letter to the Hebrews. And for those of you who might have found it a little confusing or uh, hard to understand, I must admit it makes sense that you would find it confusing or hard to understand. It is a theological treatise written in the first century by a person who's writing to a group of people that had experienced God a lot differently than we know God now. This writer of Hebrews is, is writing to a group of, of Jewish believers who were very familiar with the temple cult in Jesus' time. And it is a theological connection of Jesus to their understanding of religion. And so, separated by 2,000 years, it would make sense that we don't know what it's talking about or, or that its symbolism or, or the way that it phrases things are, are not part of what we experience. You see this early church and these early Hebrews in the temple cult were used to, to going to the temple every year, some of them even every week, to, to make sacrifices to God where they would slaughter goats and calves and, and all sorts of things. And these sacrifices and the blood of these animals was, was meant to be a payment, an atonement for all of the sins and the wrongs that they had done. And it was from their understanding of the law, their, their way of coming to religion and God, that, that they believed that without this atonement, without this blood, there could be no forgiveness and reconciliation. And so this, this writer of Hebrews takes the things that Jesus said about himself being the high priest and, and how he will be serving in the heavenly tabernacle. And, and he takes Jesus' words about his sacrifice and he weaves this, this great explanation for people who are already priests in the temple. People who already have a strong theological background and understanding. And he explains to them how Jesus is continuing to fulfill that role. The short version is that Jesus, being the Son of God, sacrifices himself and that, that blood that is Christ, that divine blood, is then sprinkled upon the heavenly tabernacle, the perfect temple that is in heaven, in which our, the temple here on earth was made in its likeness. He sprinkles his blood on that altar. And his blood is that payment that is the blood like the goats and the calves. His blood is the payment for all of our sins. And because... It is his blood and it is divine blood. And his blood is worth more than the blood of goats and calves. He only has to make the sacrifice once. And it's done. The sins of the world are forgiven. For all of those who wish to take part in that sacrifice. That's it. That's, that is the forgiveness of sins in a nutshell. That is partly how God to our creed. 
But that's not how we talk about forgiveness. That's not how we talk about Jesus' death. We, 2,000 years later, don't, don't look at the, the need for, for blood for the forgiveness of sins. Instead, we, we see Jesus' death from a different perspective. And as we recite the, the line from the creed, of the, I believe in the forgiveness of sins, we're, we're not necessarily buying into this atonement theology, which, which is no longer something that we consider relevant. Instead, we're, we're looking at a promise from God. That it's not that, that Jesus' death and His blood were required, Instead, for us 2,000 years later, we looked at Jesus' death as, as the greatest show of love, the greatest act of love in all human history. It's, it's for us a sign, a symbol that God has already forgiven us. Not that Christ needs to go and sprinkle the blood up there, but that the fact that God came down to earth for that purpose, to reach out to us, is already a sign that the forgiveness has happened even before Christ dies. It's a sign that, that God is letting go of all of the pain and the suffering, all of the mistakes that we have made in the relationship with Him. And it is Him who is gesturing to us to, to say, it's okay. I've already forgiven you. Come back and be in a relationship. You see, God is hurt when we cheat on Him, when we choose to put others before Him in our lives when we don't make Him the, the love of our life or the sole focus of our attention. That's who He wants to be for us. And it hurts when, when we don't do that, but He's able to forgive us and to, to, to usher us back into that relationship despite that pain of rejecting Him or choosing others before Him. God is, God is even able to forgive us when, when we choose to abuse Him and the things that He loves. When we choose to act horribly to our neighbors. When we hurt them. We cause them to suffer. He's willing to do this because he, he loves us so much and He wants to be in a relationship with us so much and He pursues after us so much that He lets these things go just, just for the opportunity to be in our lives and to have us in His. The forgiveness of sins is about God reaching out and striving after us wherever we go and whatever we do, that, that no matter how, how much we try to break apart that relationship, no matter how much we try to, to tear him down and say that, no, we want no part of you, or no, we, we don't care about the things that you care about. And no matter how much we do that kind of stuff, God for whatever reason has chosen to love us despite those despite those mistakes that God sees in us something worthy of being loved worthy of being pursued and God is willing to pursue us so much and to chase after us so much that he was even willing to come and die to show us just how much he loves us. To 
show us just how worthy he thinks we are of being in his presence. How valuable we are to him. When we recite the creed and we recite the forgiveness of sins, we are acknowledging that God has seen something in us has put something in us, made something in us that is of infinite worth and value regardless of what others in this world might say and what other sins this world might have to tell us otherwise, regardless of the inner voices within ourselves that may tell us that we're not good enough or we're not worthy. God makes that statement. And the recitation of the creed and the line of believing the forgiveness of sins is a reminder that God is making that statement to each of us. And along with that statement, and along with that understanding, it is also that God is forgiving the others too. That not only does God find us to be worthy and valuable and precious to Him, but that He finds each person to be worthy and valuable and precious to Him. And that if we are, are going to, to truly and fully embrace the forgiveness of sins, if we truly want to be free from the judgments and from the comparisons, then, then we also need to forgive others and to step in to God's forgiveness. need to let go of the grudges and the pain and the toxins that we allow to fester within us from the wrongs that others do to us. Because God doesn't want us to suffer. He doesn't want us to feel that pain and continue to dwell in that pain. He doesn't want us to act out and lash out against our brothers and sisters, the other creations, the other persons that He loves and values. Instead, He wants us all to be in a right relationship, to all be a family together, to, to live in peace and harmony, to seek the best for each other. We believe in the forgiveness of sins because God showed us through Jesus Christ just how willing and how committed he is to forgiving our sins. We believe in the forgiveness of sins because we believe in a God that loves us and values us no matter who we are and what we've done. A God that, that sees in our lives and in our persons a potential for greatness, a potential for divinity, a potential that he put it there himself. We are a part of the greatest love story of all time. Will we buy in? Will we believe it? Will you allow yourself to acknowledge that God has forgiven you? That God loves you and values you? Will you acknowledge that God loves others? believe in the forgiveness of sins. And we believe that God has made us in His image. That God is calling us to right relationship, calling us to something better. And asking us to invite others into that relationship as well. Amen.